Look at Robin's face. From everything that you know about our covenants, would you say that you've somehow broken your covenant? No, Mary had the affair. I didn't break covenants, and it wasn't a physical affair, so I thought we were reconcilable. No, Mary, no, it's Mary for I had nothing to do with it. I am completely weird as him. Let's get it. I know I kind of talked about this when I did the look back uh, review and I did the <laughs> the lives and all that, but I think that it's noteworthy because as we enter into this kind of off period or off season of the sister wife's context, I want to take the opportunity yet again to remind the audience how Robin and Cody are trying to recondition and rehabilitate their image and they're treating us like idiots in the process of them trying to retread this old ground. One of the things that really stuck out to me recently was the idea or concept where Cody keeps throwing out how he's a victim and how he's been mistreated. I did a couple videos, one of which is uh, how Cody feels that polygamy is unfair to men because they have been taken advantage of and they don't get the things that they need out of the relationships. The funny thing is when you consider polygamy, I see from Cody's reaction, from the wives' reaction, and even from the kids' reaction that polygamy isn't fair to anyone. Polygamy doesn't serve anybody in this situation. Now, we could make the argument that, yeah, the guys are winning because they have these ladies who are serving their needs and the children serve their needs, but ultimately they're suffering as well because when rubber meets the road, I don't disagree with Cody when he says that some of these ladies don't necessarily care for them, and if you're the right type of dude or the wrong type of dude, however you phrase it in these situations you can wind up in a situation where nobody really cares about you at all and you are a resource because of the nature of the relationship if it's a transactional relationship I give to you and you give to me and that's how we treat each other and as long as I'm getting what I want from this relationship then I will continue in a relationship and vice versa if that's the relationship they're not there for you they're there for the things that they get from you and that's both from the uh, husband to wife and wife to husband, the children, uh, so on and so forth. So with that being said, one of the things that kind of comes up is the idea of this promise, the covenant, who broke the relationships down. Cody, of course, is pointing at the wives, but there is a wife who has been taking a lot of heat, especially recently because she's moved on and because she's starting a new relationship. And that wife I'm speaking of is Mary. Mary has been taking and shouldering a lot of the heat from Cody and from uh, even audience members. I'm one of those audience members that throw a lot of heat on Mary. But we cannot overlook the fact that Mary has been in this relationship and she's been mistreated within this relationship. Let's take a listen to what uh, Cody and Robin had to say during the look back with regard to the failure or the, the deconstruction of Mary and Cody's marriage. I've had to really take a lot of time to figure out the fact that there really is no commitment or covenant. He's already broken it. Look at Robin's face. From everything that you know about our covenants, would you say that you've somehow broken your covenant? No, Mary had the affair. I didn't break covenants and it wasn't a physical affair. So I thought we were reconcilable. No, Mary, no, it's Mary for I had nothing to do with it. I am completely weird as him. <laughs> this is the most annoying part of this whole thing. You know, one of the craziest things is if Cody and Robin are serious about rehabilitating their images, the first thing you need to do is be accountable for what you did within these relationships. Nobody is buying the instance or the or the or this fictitious, crazy fantasy world where you guys are sitting there lost sheep in the world and you don't understand what's going on. Robin is always sitting there. First, I'm going to go into Robin. I was going to leave her for last, but I want to talk about Robin first. Robin is sitting there listening to Mary talk because she's supposed to be so hurt that they talking about the family we breaking apart. And she's so hurt and she's so confused and she doesn't know what's going on. Now, all of a sudden, she gets mad and she's like, hmm? What? What's this? What? Huh? What are you talking about? I don't understand. You don't understand what? You don't understand that Cody may have been the one that broke covenants, that Cody was the one who didn't want to continue the relationship, and because he no longer wanted to comply or go along with 
the relationship as it was agreed to in the beginning, that that is a breach of contract. Because at the end of the day, what is a covenant? A covenant is just basically a contract. What is a contract? Contracts have a few elements in the legal field that we could talk about, but some of the mainstays of a contract in order to, elements of a contract in order to make it enforceable is the idea that that agreement has to have a meeting of the minds. In other words, you both have to understand and agree to a certain thing. You have to agree to the conditions. What were the conditions? I'm pretty sure that Mary didn't agree to be in a relationship with Cody where she would just sit in her house by herself and then only show up for holidays, maybe some birthdays, maybe some special events, and she would continue to stroke out checks from her hard-earned money and continue to provide resources to a family who doesn't call her, doesn't check on her. She's sitting in the house by herself during a global pandemic, which I guess is pretty much... Hey, pandemic is global. But in any event, she's sitting in her house by herself during a pandemic. People falling out left and right. And she's sitting there by herself. Mary could have, forget the pandemic. Mary's in that house alone. She could have fell down the daggone step. She could have slipped on a banana peel. And nobody would have found her until the birthday came up or until somebody needed, Cody, needed her to put her name on a piece of document so that he could acquire some property or maybe get a loan. He needed a co-signer, and then all of a sudden, Mary is my best friend. But until then, Mary don't have any business in his life. So there, there's that agreement. What was the agreement? What were the conditions of this relationship, of this union? So we have to talk about the uh, consideration. That's the consideration. What, do I, what am I getting out of this? When I give you X, X, Y, Z, what am I getting in return? I'm pretty sure that Mary wasn't getting what Cody had promised her from the beginning which is why she felt the need to go out and try to find it from somewhere else. That's how they do it in business. So we're going to treat marriage like a business. That's what happens in business. If you make widgets and your supply, your, you need uh, somebody, you contract with somebody to give you certain materials so you can make your widgets, that business doesn't want to give you the supply so you can make your widgets. What do you do? You go find your supply from somewhere else. You get how for somebody else's supply. That's what happens in business. So it's not a surprise that Mary decided that she wanted to go find another supplier for her widgets. <laughs> the next part is, was she informed of what the offer was going to be? Did she Was she aware that this is how the relationship was going to be formulated? And even after they formulated the official agreement and he continuously told them and tried to tell them based on what we saw on the show, that you guys are independent, you're strong, you have your own minds, you guys are a boss of your own thing, you're the, you're the de determiners of your own destiny. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> they start trying to make choices. You can't make your own choices. What are you doing? What do you think this is? My favorite part of that little uh, exchange between Robin and Cody was the idea that Cody had brought up the idea of things being reconcilable, that they actually could have worked things out. Here's the problem, though. In order for you to work things out and reconcile an issue, there has to be an issue. So you're giving an admission, an admission that there is a problem. By you taking the positions that you took, you're acknowledging that there was a problem, there was an issue, and it needed to be fixed. My question is, what did you do to fix that issue? Now, you can sit there and say, you guys don't know my life, you don't know what happens, and ever blah, blah, blah. but what I do know is that when you were sitting in the car with her and she said, do you know I'm waiting for you? Do you know how I, it feels to have you touch my hand? You know how that feels? You know I'm waiting for you? And he looked her right in the face and said, I'm not coming. I'm not coming for you, baby. You're by yourself, baby. Good luck. Keep waiting because I'm never coming down by your house. I will never darken your towers again, young lady. That's essentially what he told her. So how is that being reconciled? How is that? How are you fixing the problems? What steps are you taking? Even then, he takes the position that you can leave and I'm fine with you going. That's what he was sitting there, had her. <laughs> this dude had her tape him, tell her that he didn't want to be with her. <laughs> You're an asshole, man. That's, that's, uh, that's straight up just, just fuckery right there. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> so... 
you have that. Then, of course, you have the idea of the no blame fault. That's my that's my favorite thing. I had to come up with a term to try to describe what this foolishness is. Oh, well, Mary is the one that had the catfish, but even then it was reconcilable. So essentially what you're saying is we have a relationship or a covenant, a sacred covenant, the sacred covenant that you have. You guys have this sacred covenant, a sacred agreement that is essentially relying on your ability to trust each other and have a relationship with one another. That relationship, of course, being built on trust. And then you're essentially going to say, even though she went out and she tried to cheat on me and betray my trust because she failed at betraying my trust, we could have got back together. Nobody trusts somebody who tried to steal from them. Nobody trusts somebody who tried to cheat on them but couldn't get it done. Like if I if I if I have a life insurance policy and my lady know that I have a life insurance policy and she tries to take the brakes out of my car, but she she wound up tightening it up or she didn't take enough of the fluid, brake fluid out of my brakes and they continued to work and I was able to save myself. I'm not coming home. I'm not gonna say it's okay, she wasn't successful, so I guess it's reconcilable. I guess we could work it out. There's enough there. No, I'm not trying that and it would make sense, but he's sitting here saying that it was understandable because there was no issue. So if there was no issue and it wasn't a problem, then it's not an issue and it's not a problem. You should get over it and stop mentioning it. If it's not a problem, it's not a problem. But the fact you brought it up tells me that it's a problem and you still have a problem with it. Or more to the point, I won't even say that he has a problem with it as much as he's going to use it as an excuse not to get back with her. That's his excuse. She just gave him the reason as to why he doesn't want to continue the relationship. That was the, the, uh, the final thing. But I do have one more thing with that. Uh, Robin sitting there doing the whole, uh, I don't understand. In your understanding of the covenants. Is that how it works? <laughs> First of all, you broke down Columbo, your cuckoo Columbo. For those young young folks who don't understand, let, let an old head explain to you what a Columbo is. Columbo was a detective who used to be on like a TV detective. And his whole gimmick was he would show up and he'd have like the ruffled hair and he looked like he slept in his suit, his car shooting black smoke out the back. They called it a smoke screen, right? He'd pull up in his junkie car and he would come out and it'd be a murder and he would talk to the people and he would start asking questions. And this dude was the smartest guy on the show, hands down. Most of the criminals he dealt with were geniuses, but this guy was like way smarter than them. But because of his appearance and because everybody thought he would underestimate him, everybody around him underestimated him because of how he looked. He had cross eyes and his eyes all crazy looking, cockeyed, right? And he would ask questions and, and people, would get, people would get annoyed with him. And they would a answer his questions. They'd be like, oh, just one more thing. And he'd be bothering them and they'd be like, get the hell out of here, man. I ain't trying to answer no more stupid ass questions. See, if he came up and he was smart and he was smooth and he had a tie and he was slicked out and he'd pull up in a Ferrari, Right? Nobody would talk to this guy. They'd be like, lawyer, <laughs> lawyer, immediate lawyer. <laughs> I, I try to have no conversations with you. But because they underestimate him, when he asked dumbass questions, they had no problem asking the dumbass questions. But every one of the questions that he had had a purpose, a plan, and a point. When I listen to Robin, I understand that she has a purpose, a plan, and a point. But your, your questions are so transparent. I don't. Nobody thinks that you're dumb. Nobody thinks you're an idiot. Nobody thinks that you're just walking around this innocent dove, just confused in the world because you have no idea what's going on. Everybody knows that you're the one that's behind most of the mayhem, confusion, and the discord within the Brown family. So let's, let's just call it what it is. Own it. Own it the same way justice for Jeff, the same way Jeff asked you to own a situation where you and Cody are in love, you found each other, well, he loves you, and you're able to manipulate him, so you're getting what you want. <laughs> the same way that happens, own the fact that you are manipulating the hell out of Cody, and because the wives have left, the resources have left, you are now unhappy, and you are no longer satisfied in your relationship. That's fine. That's why you're mad at Jeff. 
It's not because Jeff tried to put you two together. It's because Jeff put you two together minus the three women who were contributing a lot to your finances and to your lifestyle. Now, let's move on and go back a little further because back in season 15 or season 17, this is one of the things that Cody had said. Now, keep in mind, this is two years uh, about two, almost three years prior to the look back when everybody is confused and they don't know what's going on as far as who and who broke covenant and who's responsible for the downfall or the breakdown in the relationship between Mary and Cody. Let's take a look at that. I want to work on the relationship, but Cody has basically said that he doesn't. Does that mean we're just not married anymore? Hmm. That's not how I consider it. Okay. I feel like we're still married. I don't really consider myself married to Mary. Hmm. I just, if she wanted to, if she wanted to move on and marry another, she wouldn't get an argument with me. I don't believe that we can ever be functional. And I don't believe that I will ever be emotionally safe with her. So if the contract hasn't been broken, you guys are still together. The contract hasn't been broken. There's no issue. I don't understand. I don't understand. How is it? that Mary is able to move on. In her words, she thinks that the marriage is still going. She thinks that you can still work things out. She's still in position. She's still trying to get the marriage back on track. You're saying that the marriage not only is done and broken, but she can move on. She can get another. She can fall in love with another. She can have another. That's what you said. And now you're trying to turn the, the history, turn the cut hands of time back, time after time. You're trying to turn it all back so that it, it works for, for what you want it to work for. You're trying to recreate history. This is the the, the part of the the storyline and a part of their uh their their rehabilitation that's so annoying to me. Because you're trying to throw this lady under the bus and make her seem like she's crazy. This is in fact gaslighting. Because they're trying to make you feel like you didn't hear hear them say what you heard them say. I never said, I never broke covenants. What are you talking about? That's ridiculous. The only person who would think I broke covenants is somebody who is insane. I would never break covenants. This is what I want. Oh my life, I wanted to sit on the porch where my sister was and watch my grandkids as I count their money. That's what they expect us to do. That's the, the lie that they expect us to fall for. That's the, the storyline that they have, have us going for. That they just think that they're going to say whatever they want to say. And because you watch something, no, if you watch that, you remember that. And if you put it on a video and try to remind people that this is what happened, all of a sudden you're insane. You're the crazy one. And more to the point, from what Cody and Robin have tried to say about fans and people who watch the show and criticize the show, is that we are the ones who are, have it all wrong. Nay, nay, I disagree. You guys have it wrong if you think we're falling for this craziness. So I'm going to do a lot of videos just talking about the inconsistencies of the story they're telling now versus what they told us in the past. Holla at your boy. Let me know what you guys think. This is my take. I'm James. This has been my take on reality, and I'm out.